Welcome back, friends and scoundrels. I'm Bran. And I'm Lynn. I'm Sarah. And tonight we're going to start our process of ruining board games for people. Do we have to do that? That one doesn't seem very nice. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about solo together games. Uh, Sub-genre? Genre? Is it its own genre? I don't think it's its own genre. I suppose. It's a Venn diagram of all these board games that... <laughs> um, so anyways, uh, what are solo together's? So I guess solo together's are just generally games that you play with other people where you interact very little, not at all mechanically. So it's a multiplayer game, but you don't interact with other players very much, necessarily. Necessarily. So games like Planted or Sig Sushi Go, Sushi Go Party, Sagrada, Cartographers. Actually, I think a lot of the rolling rights are kind of that way, aren't they? I think so. Um, what else? There's a whole bunch. I just when I made my notes, I tried to think of things as I could, but Planted's a really good example where there's very little because you each have your own player board and you have your deck of cards and you take a card out and then pass it to the next person and it's like the most of your interaction and your card choices affect other people or you can't affect other people with your card choices nursery but mm. you gotta call out but for the most part you're focusing on your own goal calico yeah. That's, I think, when you first thought of this. This was Calico. Maybe. Because other than possibly accidentally taking a piece someone else needed, there's, like, no interaction at all unless you're hate drafting. Right. Which is still picking a piece. <laughs> you're just picking it with a different intent. Uh, I'm trying to think. Is there anything where there's, like, almost no interaction or no interaction? You're just kind of playing together? Uh, Calico is the one I think does it best. I don't think there's any with no, but Calico, like, because you don't interact with the other player's board at all. You're essentially both playing a solo game together. The exception being hate drafting. If I'm paying attention to your board and see you need a piece, yeah. taking it from you. But again, but that would stick me with that piece if it was made sense for me to do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the closest, unless there's like some rolling rights. Like cartographers, obviously not, because you can, well, the one that we have. Heroes. Yeah, because you can put monsters on other people's stuff and other things. I don't know about any of the other ones. Uh, lots of the expansions are map packs. Yep. They are, so it doesn't really change play that much. I was trying to think of three sisters, but you're taking dice off the rondelle, so you are taking dice that the other person can't. So, anytime there's drafting. Time there's drafting. But that's probably the minimum if that's all it is, is just drafting. And you're just sitting there hoping the other person doesn't take what you want. Same with Sushi Go. Sushi Go is also drafting. It's closed mm -hmm. draft. So, most of them have, like, one mechanic. <laughs> that you interact with other people. Oh, uh, we did talk about quite a few examples there. Are there any others? No? I don't think so. I think we got a little more into that than we intended to. That's fine. These are just basic notes. You don't even have to read them verbatim. <laughs> I didn't. I went off script a while ago. Um, so let's backtrack a little bit because I forgot to describe how we're going to ruin board games for people. And... I'm the kind of person that I like to find lessons in everything. And not that there's much of a stigma with board games anymore. They picked up as geek cultures picked up and it's less shameful. But to find a little bit more validity, if you will, in playing board games. So anyways, um, what are some general things that we all like about these games? I like these games because they are not as mean usually usually and if you want to be mean you can find a mean means to you, be mean you can be obviously but i generally don't like the games that are more super competitive take that and... yeah take that i hate take that 
they can be fun if you're playing with the right people and you know there's no malicious intent. It's just you're just playing the game. I I particularly find those hard to play with mom when she's over. Yeah, I find I find it hard in general because <laughs> I just want to be nice. It's my mom. <laughs> What you and me for? <laughs> right, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Which is weird that I don't like super competitive ones and take that because I'm mean. <laughs> Maybe that's the real reason why you don't like them. Because of how mean you can be. This is true. So I can be very mean, and I don't like to be. But those games make me very mean. They tend to bring out the worst in people. It's it's very easy to forget that you're playing a game. Yeah. But we're not talking about those. <laughs> yeah, well, but it's the way I was raised. <laughs> Anything else? Why you like these kind of games? Uh, they make good warm-up games because they're so chill. This is true. They are, tend to be pretty chill. And they it's also be easier to teach and more welcoming. And, and rules light a lot of times too, which is kind of part of what you were saying there. They do, and they're usually really fun themed games, too. Heavy and can't. Well, I suppose any game can be heavily themed if you do it right. Do you have anything else? No. Um, a lot of my liking of these games usually falls in line with the mechanics of the individual games, so it's hard to say. <laughs> oh, I love cats is another one. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites, but a lot of them have very similar mechanics that they're all very puzzly and trying to solve some kind of situation and whatever it may be yeah um whether you're trying to put together a certain grouping of things or several groupings of things or like with isle of cats where it's tetris on a boat with cats <laughs> maybe who doesn't love that dogs what do they know what do you know? She's sleeping. <laughs> um, anything else? So I think the reason you wanted to talk about this was the lessons. Yeah. You got off a little bit there. Well, I was just circling back on that. This that was so the next point. Circle again. Let's get into the actual lessons now. Yeah. All right. So, and, and the other point, especially with something like this, is trying to think of different ways. So one of the other reasons why what you kind of alluded to why we like these games is that you don't have to be competitive even though a lot of them have a competitive element to them so instead of just playing keeping track of points you can take the goals a lot of the goals have games set into them like parks um what else uh so parks sagrada you're Whole, you've got your own glass window that you're trying to construct and you know other than somebody taking your piece of glass at that moment it's not really affecting you too much same with earth so a lot of those games have goals in them as you play the games more and play more games you can think about the goals before you go in or start to develop your own goals setting personal goals yeah like Scoring better than you did the last time. Hot take. I think generally, uh, beat your own score. People don't tend to like that. I don't mind it. I don't know. I can't speak to that necessarily, especially other people's brains. But I would imagine part of that is because maybe you're getting outside of the normal rule set. So if you're tracking points, why are you not trying to beat the other people, maybe? Yeah, because well, cause I've noticed in solo play... Generally, it seems people per seem to prefer actively playing against an AI versus beating your own score. But I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do that because you're showing yourself how you're improving in this thing, which is something I, I would imagine most of us strive to do at any rate. But then again, some people like to just exist. <laughs> but personally attacked because I just like to play. And there, there's nothing wrong with that. With just wanting to play and yeah, setting your own goals or just playing against a goal. Like Parks is one of the better examples that I know of offhand because there's, you've got to get 
what is it, so many parks with this many resources or whatever on it or something like that. So that's a fun, interesting challenge, and you don't have to worry about what the other player is doing at all. Is there a score element? Yeah, but do you have to use it? No. Not necessarily. It's just, I achieve it's, my goal. That's what I set out to do, which I like to do in parks because it's generally a chill vibe. It is a chill game. And just like in real life, you know, or or in real life, everybody's got their own goals and desires of what they want to achieve and accomplish, right? Just because John down the road has, you know, eight bedroom house doesn't mean that you need to have an eight bedroom house if four or five fit your needs. And unless you're doing a lot of work in your house, you don't really, you know, but everybody's got their own own needs, right? Maybe John got a big family and that's why he needs all those rooms because a lot of people come and stay all at once. It's really annoying because he takes up the entire street with parking, but, you know, family's important. So you don't complain about it. <laughs> but also a lot of times we forget that the guy who's taking the big house and the big boat and the car that he barely fits into also has to give up a lot of stuff in his personal life. And that's true in these games, too, if you try to do a lot more. It's still possible to score a whole lot, but you end up giving up other aspects. Because you try to do everything, but you can't. Right. So it's a good opportunity to help teach yourself to focus in on some things a little bit more, too. We're learning skills, people. <laughs> I really like those games. Ones where there's so much to do that you can't possibly do everything, so it's different every time you can focus on different things. Yeah. Yeah, plants is a fairly decent one. You can focus on getting plants that require certain resources and focus on cards that give you a lot of those resources. Or you can just let the guy next to you not pay attention to what you're doing and just keep collecting all the bonus cards. Which, that's one of the things that helped kick this off. Was when that happened. That was shortly after we talked about. Um, yeah, I think that's it for that topic. I don't know how to segue out of it and into the next one very well. These games are also really good about demonstrating how sometimes you have to make adjustments due to external forces. And we've touched on this a little bit with games like Tiny Towns or Sagrada, King Domino, which we haven't mentioned yet. And it's, you know, a lot of times with those games, you have certain cards or dice or whatever sitting out. And, or you're relying on somebody else to call the correct resource and you're just hoping that it happens, but sometimes it doesn't and you have to make do in that moment. Having to alter your course. Yeah. But I mean, the, the chaos of life. <laughs> I have to adjust my course almost constantly at work. <laughs> I live in a very, I exist in a very chaotic work environment. Yeah, because there's... There's games that you can plan for it, so there's not a lot of unexpected things happening. Like Spirit Island, you know what's coming. Yes, what's um, invading, you don't know, but you know what's ravaging and what's building, so you can plan. Yeah, you know the next step. Yeah, you know the next step. You don't have to suddenly on your turn change your decision because the piece you were waiting for is taken. Planted's not too bad either, especially if you're paying attention to what everybody else is doing. You can kind of guess what they're going to do. But you do have an idea of what cards are going to be there next time based on what there is and what the hot cards are too. You know, those double resources or really good item or whatever. But this, this is a good um, example of one of my favorite quotes is that the enemy gets a vote. The enemy gets the vote. Not the enemies, but the other side gets a vote. Like, again, going into work, your coworkers get a vote, your family, your spouse or your children get a vote and how things happen in the day and around tours and things. Even though they know they need done, they might not want to do them. So you got to vote to not fight them. I'm going to fight you. <laughs> But also, you know, again, paying attention, sometimes your goals overlap mm -hmm. and you can help each other out a little bit. And that kind of goes in, this kind of goes into the next point. 
is that there's always more opportunities. Right? So Tiny Towns is a good example of um, goals overlapping and kind of decide to kind of build similar things. And I think, I don't know if it made it into my notes for some reason. Oh, it's it's in the next point. Um, well, I mean, that is even the next one. Maybe a different wording on it. Your actions can help other people. But then are you really even playing the game if you're helping other people in a competitive game? It says it has to be competitive. Because solo togethers are competitive, otherwise they're cooperative. Or you're on your own. <laughs> then there's no helping someone else if you're on your own. You're building a community. <laughs> You've lost the plot. You took us away from the plot. I'm, I've jumped ahead a little bit because all these things kind of tie together, but you know, can be their own thing. But there's always more opportunities like Sagrada and Floriferous and Tiny Towns that just because you lost out on this thing this time doesn't mean that those resources or that color dye or whatever isn't going to creep up again in the future yeah. somehow, some way. Unless you'd entered a new season, it's not readily available. Yeah, and that's a matter of timing. But again, where your goals overlap, like tiny towns, as I was saying a minute ago, you know, you can, you could talk it out a little bit and say, hey, we want to build, I'm working on this. What are you trying to work on? What resources do we need? There's no reason why you can't do that. Well, sure there is. Then are you really even playing the game? Why not? The goal is to build a town. The goal is to beat the other person. Says who? Okay, but we're also trying to tell people that you don't have to play that way. <laughs> but back to Planted, as we mentioned before, that thing that kicked it off, or kicked off part of this, is you had taken something that when other people take a certain resource, you get it to or whatever. Yeah. And Creature Comforts, there's opportunity for that too, because Creature Comforts, you are kind of a little community all working together and around each other. And I know there's points, but I, I think that's just because we expect games to have points and that we should be a challenge to each other. Creature Comforts is a really good example of what are you offering your community? What are you doing to help out the people around you and, and make everybody's life a little bit better? Yeah. Because, yeah, we are doing our own thing, but it doesn't mean that we have to take from each other. It doesn't mean we have to sabotage the other person. Or... There's lots of them. Um... Of the cards in that too, where you choose to give a resource to another player and they choose one for you and you put out, you, you purchase things, but that they can go there and they gain benefits, you gain benefits, and everybody wins. And it's like you and your neighbor both building a deck and you could choose to buy things separately or maybe if you combined your order and got everything all at once, it would make things a little bit cheaper for everybody. But you have to talk to your neighbor before you can do that. And it's just some random idea that I thought about. And you've got other instances of, of these games too, that just because someone else does something doesn't mean that you can't do it too. So my main example for, for this is Floriferous, where you've got the day goals, or whatever. Yeah. And everybody can get the five points for the first day. Everybody can get the three points for the third day or second day. I got confused. Day one, day two, day three. <laughs> I was combining all the numbers. But you know what I'm talking about. That there's point values for getting things on the days and you can get those. It's not limited to just one person. Like a lot of games are. Ooh. And which is another way you can modify these games to make them more... Less heated. And sometimes a little bit more enjoyable. If you're a group that doesn't like competitive stuff as much, there's nothing wrong with modifying the rules a little bit that you've got that token. And once you get it, you can put your thing on there. Yeah. Any other thoughts? No, none thoughts. No? Okay. And then some of these games have a mechanic that uh, you have to make a difficult choice. So King Domino and Fluorifers are my main two that I'm thinking about on this too how the first player mechanic works where it's whoever takes the top of the stack yeah as the first player the next round or whatever it is 
next round of choosing. So a lot of times you want to try to be the first player, but sometimes you really need that card. And, you know, it's that risk versus reward. You know, if I give up the first player spot, are they going to get cards that I want down the road? And how much does this help me out? Is this more important to me now or the thing later more important? Yes. Discipline. Impulse purchases. <laughs> yes. Those get everybody. Some people more than others. <laughs> but it is a very important thing that I think a lot of people are lacking in life in general, just from my personal observations. And it leads to a lot of other problems down the road. So another area where you can use games to teach yourself some skills to be a little bit better. To make those little changes that you want to make in your life, if you want to make them. All right, well, I guess that's it. Maybe we'll have to revisit this later when we're a little bit better. So anyways, um... Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, let us know by liking it and by sharing it with somebody you think will also enjoy it. Uh, if you've got any other ideas of how solo togethers can be more friendly or more personal gore oriented or whatever, a lot less competitive, however you want to word it, let us know down below. Let other people know down below because it's not just about us. It's hard to remember all the things I'm supposed to say. So just say nothing. Everyone knows. Everyone knows that the links are down below. And also like and subscribe, too. This is no one's first day on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And that being said, till next time, live to roll. Is that a spider? It's dice rolling. <laughs> <laughs>